Hello, this is Fancy Ray, the best looking man in comedy today. My special, special guest tonight is comedian Dana Gould. You may recognize Dana from his numerous TV appearances. He's known universally throughout the stand-up world as Mr. Sunshine. How you doing, Dana? Pretty good. What's shaking, man? Oh, honey? man, you got it, baby. Now, being Mr. Sunshine, how do you feel? I feel great, you know. The way I see life, Ray, uh -huh. we're all born the same. When we come out, we're naked, we're covered in blood, and we're screaming in terror. And it doesn't have to stop there if you know how to live right. Um, but, 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 but being known for your positiveness and uh, touching so many people's lives with your optimism and your joy and your happiness, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel terrific, just spreading what I have and giving it to other people. The way I see life, Ray, uh -huh. the luckiest people in the world, next to you and I, uh -huh. are the best friends of sideshow freaks. Because <laughs> they get to look at them all day long for free. Uh, Dana, Dana, um, what do you say to yourself when you look in the mirror every morning? Good morning, chump. <laughs> Dana, this doesn't sound very happy. I mean, uh, wh wh what makes you happy, Dana? Oh, there's one thing that makes me happy. What's that? Watching Fancy Ray and getting down with it. Ow! Oh, my, my, my. Don't go nowhere. Stay tuned. Coming up, we got Dana Good. My, 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 my. Ow! Hello, my name is Fancy Ray McClory, and I am the best-looking man in comedy. Talk show host, I dime a dozen. The only exception is me, because I've got the grooves, the moves, the looks, and this incredibly charming personality. Now, when I first saw Sally Jesse Raphael, my eyes, they started to sag. I said, the networks are trying to fool us. That ain't nothing but Donahue dressed in drag. Now, some people think Oprah Winfrey is the best. They think Oprah wears the crown. Well, she may be the heavyweight champ, honey. I'm the best under 200 pounds. <laughs> Stay tuned. I'm Fancy Rain. It's time to get down with it. Ah, I said it. Get down. Hello, this is Fancy Ray McClure, the best looking man in comedy. Ooh, some people think I'm a fruit. Others say I'm a berry. And those who know me well, ooh, they say I'm a chocolate covered cherry. <laughs> ooh, my, my, my. My featured guest tonight is an outstanding comedian. He has been on Arsenio, Showtime, HBO. He is universally recognized for being uncanny and unconventional. He's also known as being outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce comedian Dana Good. How are you? How do I look, Dana? You look incredible, man. I know. Incredible, say that again. Incredible, I thought I looked good and then I left the house and then I saw you. Uh huh, well that happens to a lot of people out there watching the show, you know that. First thing people say to themselves when they see you, uh -huh. I gotta go back to work. <laughs> Woo, and they go to pay dirt. <laughs> oh man, they put on a new shirt. That's right, they gotta buckle down. Oh man, no doubt about it. Dana, your comedy act is very unique. In fact, something that you don't know is that my very first paid comedy gig here in Minneapolis was I was emceeing a show for you at the old comedy gallery at River Place. Oh, wow, I remember that. Yes. Yes, and you had this, the, I remember exactly where you were, you had these great shark skin suits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I try to dress up nice, but it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. get in a nice shark skin suit and I say, why is Dana in that stolen suit? <laughs> no, no, they don't say that about you, Dana. Because <laughs> you're making the big bucks out in Hollywood now. That's right, but I ain't, I ain't spending it on clothes, as you can tell. <laughs> Who spent more time in the wardrobe? No, no, no. But you know something, Dana, is that your comedy act, you touch issues and go places that most comedians wouldn't go. Yeah, I just do what I think is funny, you know, as, as you do, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I just try to think of what kind of show would I like to see, mm -hmm. what would make me laugh, and, th and those are the places I like to go. I I've always been sort of laughing at the things that not everybody else laughs at, you mm -hmm. know. But I mean, you're talking about like alienation, humiliation, uh, misery, despair. That's not a place where most comedians go. Well, when I experience other emotions, I'll talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the question I have to ask, to ask of you is how much of that is from your personal experience and how much of it is just an act. Right. Well, it, it's, it's all from my personal experience, but it's not exclusively, you know. I mean, I, I'm a, in a great happy mood as much as everybody else, but everybody goes through that really awkward stage when you're in your mid-twenties or, or whenever as mm -hmm. a kid, mm -hmm. and that's really from where I draw most of my humor. That's the stuff that I think is really funny, is the stuff that also hurts a little bit too, mm -hmm. you know. That's, that's where I find I'm best suited. I can write jokes about politics or whatever, but the stuff that I really do best is go to that sort of feeling of uncomfortable, you know, when you're uncomfortable or you've blown it with a woman or, you know, it's just when it's really wrong, that's what I find the humor in. But there's so much pain. I mean, most people don't go there for humor. Yeah, uh, uh, they don't. That's why I'm sort of unique. It works. <laughs> right, right. I mean, right. that's, but that's you. I mean, that's what right. makes Dana Gould so special. 
Yeah, right, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, a, limited, it's a, a limited thing, but it, it works for me, you know. Uh -huh. I can't imagine you ever feeling any of those feelings. Oh, no, 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 no. The last time I felt misery was one day I was got up in the morning and I looked in the mirror and it was dirty. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> See, now you tell me that story. I'll put it into my act. Okay. <laughs> true, true. It's so true. In your act, you make fun of comedians who do the, like, you know, punchline, yeah. set up, punchline, set up, punchline, set up, punchline. I, I love a good comedian, and I, it doesn't have to be standard. What I sort of like to poke fun at is people that do it in an uncreative way, uh -huh. and there's just that cookie cutter, you right. know, sort of thing. Right. I mean, because, you know, you created a vehicle for yourself mm -hmm. that's a, it's unique, and you're your own person. Mm -hmm. You know how to do it. You know mm -hmm. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And we know other people that have done the same thing. And then there are people that they, there's no creativity to it. They just sort of come out, blurt out the jokes, get their check, and leave. Mm -hmm. And those are the people I have little patience with. Who inspired the type of comedy that you do it? Um, boy, it's really hard to say. I remember when I was young, like, who was your favorite comic when you're starting out? Man, unquestionably Richard Pryor. Yeah, Richard Pryor. The first Richard Pryor movie, live in concert, uh -huh. where he had the heart attack. Uh -huh. That one bit where he had the heart attack is really what stuck with me. As like, because it was about something really horribly painful, mm -hmm. but it was so hilarious. And he did it in such a theatrical way. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was amazing. I was also a huge fan of George Carlin, although I don't think that I really do anything like him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Albert Brooks, the, uh, the actor, Albert sure, Brooks, sure, sure. When he did stand up for a while, and, and that just put me right out. Really? Okay, yeah, okay. just killed me. Let me write a couple of names by you, speaking of comedians. How about... Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman, brilliant. I could never even approach what he did. He, he, Andy Kaufman did comedy about comedy. People don't understand that. Half the time when Andy Kaufman was working, he was making fun of comedy. Uh -huh. It was, yeah, you, he's one of those people that you look at like, I can never even get close to that. Really? He, really? he inspires you that much? Right? Yeah, he's just so incredible. Yeah. Uh, how about, let's say, uh, we got local comedian Joel Hodson. Joel Hodson, big fan, good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, he's the reason I have my manager. Really? Yeah, I was in Minneapolis uh, a couple of years ago. Joel and I met, became friends. He had his manager come in from New York, and uh, that's how I got my manager. Really? Okay, yeah. okay. And you're, you're hooked up now, and you're cooking now. Yeah, yeah, and Joel's still a really good friend. Oh, man, he's a beautiful cat, yeah, man. Yeah, he's a great guy. How about Eddie Murphy? Eddie Murphy, hilarious. Delirious tour. Funniest live comedy show I've see, ever seen. I'm surprised that you like his style of comedy. No, see, I like I like all that sort of stuff. I okay. mean, I mean, I I love Don Rickles. Okay. I think Don, you know, anybody that's that's telling the truth about who they are, mm -hmm. ma makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I never saw Raw. Okay. And I, I'm not a big fan of Martin Lawrence because I don't think Martin Lawrence puts as much creativity into it as Eddie Murphy did. I mean, Eddie has an incredible mind, mm -hmm. and Martin, I think, is an amazing performer, but he doesn't. The material, it just doesn't have the the spark okay. to me uh -huh. that eddie murphy had okay. stephen wright another just being who he is brilliant brilliant yeah. absolutely brilliant yeah. who don't you like that's big who don't i well mm -hmm. I, I'd, I'd hate to name any names but, on camera but but you know the people that come <laughs> out and do the same blah. Like, uh, okay uh, let me let me, like, uh, let me let me think hard. Let me okay, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a commercial break right now, trouble. and we're gonna come back. We're gonna find out who Dana doesn't like <laughs> right here on the Fancy Ray Show. Tell them to stay tuned. Tell them to get down with it. I'm here, and we're gonna get down with it. Oh my my my, Dana Gould. We'll be right back. Ow. In break on through with JFK. Yeah. All right. Meet the president. Come on, I'm the president. Let's have fun. The image. I don't know about the pants. They, they don't go with the time. The man. You may be the president of the United States, but you are still the president of our love. But, Jackie. Oh, oh. You're all of us. All right, yeah. Oh, roses are red, violets are blue. You know I look good, and I know it too. <laughs> this is Fancy Ray, the best looking man in comedy, with comedian Dana Good. Hiya, brother. How you doing, Dana? Shaking. Now they're coming back. Now we're sitting on the edge of our seats. We're going to find out this. who Dana doesn't like. Just... Who's, who sucks, Dana? Who sucks? Who bites the big one? Jay Leno. I can't stand it. <laughs> can't watch him anymore. Why not? Used, used to be the best. Jay in his day was nobody could touch him. Uh -huh. was so great. And you can see him hold back. Mm -hmm. And you can see him try to please everybody instead of making people laugh he's not being himself have no time for it like what do you mean he's not being himself what do you mean? he's it's like if i went on and pretended to be really and pretended to do just bland material when i when you know there's somebody there's something behind it mm -hmm. you know if if uh 
if Prince, you know, how, how would I look at you and think of Prince? If Prince, <laughs> if Prince went on and sang you know, Michael Bolton stuff to try to sell more records, he's not being himself. Right. Jerry Seinfeld, same thing. Clever, bright, boring. Nothing there excites me. There's nothing dangerous about either one of those performers. You know what I mean? That's, but, but is it still funny, though? They're still funny, but to me, I don't, I'm not interested because there's no danger there. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be a sense of danger. Eddie Murphy, brilliant. Richard Pryor, you don't know what's going to happen next. What's going to happen? It might be scary. It might be wild. It might be something I've never heard before. Right. You know, that's what keeps you on your seat. That's what's vital. That's what's theater. That's why you watch. Jay Leno, Jerry Seinfeld, boring. Sandra Bernhard has never made me laugh. Uh -huh. I don't get it. Uh-huh. How about Sam Kennison? Sam Kennison was great. And when Sam Kennison started, um, towards the end of his life, uh, he sort of became this parody of a heavy metal guy. Mm -hmm. But before Sam Kennison was even on TV, when he was just working the door at the comedy store, mm -hmm. no one could touch him. Sam, mm -hmm. Sam Kennison was the most... You laugh so hard, you like beg him to stop. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. A another guy who was just real, being himself. Mm -hmm. Bill Hicks, greatest. Being himself, talking about what mattered to Bill Hicks, the best. The best. Yeah. Paula Poundstone, very funny. Talks mm -hmm. about what's important to her, gets it out. Mm -hmm. now you mentioned Le Leno. Now, you've done Arsenio. I did Arsenio. Have you done, Le have you done Leno yet? I haven't done Leno yet, no. And I know the guy. I've been to his house, you know. But okay. he just, I think he looks at people like me. It's probably why I don't like him. As he looks at me and sees somebody <laughs> that's, that's a little on the edge and dangerous, and, and instead of framing that and putting it on television and presenting it as here's something different and unique, they go, no, no, we can only have bland people on. But it's because the style that you do, the comedy that you do is such, it's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. Does that hurt your TV appearance to say like yes. Letterman? Yes, it does. Right. But I can't compromise who I am. You mm -hmm. just got to do what you do and eventually they'll catch up. Mm -hmm. That's what you wait for. Mm -hmm. I mean, same with you. you. You wouldn't change. Mm -mm. Take it on TV. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You just mm -mm. do what you do. Mm -mm. No, Let I everybody else it. catch up. I mean, could you see me in blue jeans? No. <laughs> could you see me in anything but? <laughs> my, 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 you know, my, my. There's room for all different types. That's, That's what you I hope mean, for. There's a wide spectrum. Right. Now, Arsenio's going off the, sh off the air. Arsenio's going off the air. He is... Let me put in a plug. He is the nicest guy. You know, I did the Dennis Miller show, Arsenio Hall show. I've been to the Tonight Show when Johnny Carson was there. I've, you know, been to the Leno show. I've, I've been to all the shows. Arsenio Hall, the, uh, and they're all nice. All those guys are nice people. Mm -hmm. They're all great people. Mm -hmm. But uh, Arsenio Hall was the nicest, most down-to-earth person I've met of all the hosts. Really? Yeah. Really? When I did the show, came backstage, thanks for being here, handshake, totally normal guy, mm -hmm. went, did the show. During the commercial, talks to you, cool, great guy. I wish him luck with whatever he does. And he's a very rich kid. He's not hurting right yeah, now. Yeah, he's, you know, you ain't going to be seeing him at the end of the grocery aisle asking you for paper or plastic either. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see Fancy Red, then I'll uh, get silk, okay? That's what I'll say. <laughs> get silk. <laughs> You'll be at Frederick's. <laughs> No, out in Hollywood, there's so much stuff going on. There's a Tom and Roseanne thing. Do you know Tom yeah. and Roseanne? I've met them, yeah. Very nice people. What do you think about the whole threesome, marriage, oh. divorce, back together, Ooh. off again? It's who cares. I don't care. You don't care. No, I mean, there's other stuff to watch. I'm, a, I'm a, like an old fogey. I watch Nightline. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. What, I mean, people, people aren't familiar with you. They're watching, like, okay, now who is fancy? Who, now, who is Dana Gould? Tell them who Dana Gould is. Well, I'm uh, your average, irate, white boy who thinks way too much for his own good. <laughs> I'm always willing to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory, and I'm never short, <laughs> and I'm never caught short of a headache. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, let's put it this way. If you, if you in, the, in the realm of music, mm -hmm. if you were the George Clinton and the Parliament Funkadelic. Oh, man, flashlight. Ooh. I would be... Elvis Costello with a sneer and a thick pair of glasses. <laughs> Ooh, room no, for plenty. Room for plenty. That's uh, right. Ooh, and there is many. Ooh. I'm an angry white boy that didn't get as many women as he wanted, and everybody's going to pay. Now, that's something you talk about in your act, in fact, is your relationships with women. Uh-huh. Not a and lack thereof. <laughs> Tell me about women. What's the problem with you and women? You're a good-looking guy. You're very talented. You're, you got the dough. What's going on with you and women? I just screw it up every time, man. I don't know what it is. I just I blow it every time. Why? I, just, it's like, you know, talk to me. Talk it's to like me, I, I buy all these Porsches, and one's wrapped around a tree. One I drove into a lake. One I drove into a ditch. I don't mean to do it. They're great cars. Really? Oh. Dude. I got to get me a Porsche with no wheels. <laughs> it's, it's, but, what's, you know, what's going no, on? I see, no, I had a one really long relationship that really kicked me in the gut. And uh, and now I'm doing fine. Mm -hmm. I enjoy life. Really? Now who you date now, Dana? Oh, I'm several people, women I know. Is that right? I'm sharing the wealth. All right, well, stay tuned. You're not We're the only beautiful person on the show. <laughs>
<laughs> Ooh, and I'm a va- no, no, I'm not. We'll talk about that after the show. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. <laughs> my, 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 my. I tell you what, we're going to take another break right now. We're going to come back and we're going to find out about women. We're going to talk about this act. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Don't go nowhere. This is Dana Good. I'm the chocolate human. Okay? I know I look good. Don't go nowhere. It's time to get down with it. My, my, my. Oh. <laughs> U.S. Custom Coast Guard dope dog nickname bust him like most dope sniffing dogs. He's got a habit, trained to have to have it. Pick up the tracks of the traffickers and track them like a rabbit up the coastline. Canine, control substance retriever, receiver of the Golden Nose Award for leading to the cash, cashing in on the stash. Now he's in line for his issue of the booty. Never do he do a line in the line of duty. He's a dope dog. Undercover knock with a bark, took a bite out of crime. Posing as a CNI dog, he bit the blind, the man with the cane made of coke. Hello, this is Fancy Ray, the best looking man in comedy. I can be your husband, I can be your wife. I'm all utility. Ooh, like a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> I like that one. We're here with comedian Dana Good. Welcome back, Dana. How are you, brother? How do I look? You look fabulous. Oh, you keep, get better every day. I know, I know fabulous. You can't fantastic. wait for tomorrow. I know, I know. Keep talking. You're telling the <laughs> truth. You're telling the truth. You know, you asked me before, how do, I, how do I assimilate myself? Can we get a shot of those shoes? This is the perfect. This is Ray, and this is me. Woo, fancy. Beautiful Italian loafers. Sturdy uh, old wingtips. <laughs> oh, parts of me are sturdy, though. That's all uh, right. I'm not doubting that. Okay. I, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> there may be wingtips on it, too. <laughs> what, whatever works. <laughs> now, we're talking about different women and your different experiences with women. Mm-hmm. You talk about your family background. Yeah. How much, how much is the Dana Gould that we see on stage is really Dana all Gould? All lies. Oh. Not a word of truth. No. I made it all up. <laughs> lies. No, it's, it's, you know, you talk about a part of it, you know. It's one part of my life. Are I going to talk about the stuff that's happy? No, it's boring. Who cares? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? So that, these are things that happen. But I have great relations with my family. But, but you always say, you know, am, am, am I happy? Are you happy? Oh, yeah. No, very much. Really? Very, yeah, I'm doing what I want to do, getting paid, making bucks. Right. I've got good shoes. Right. Hair grew in. <laughs> I ain't bald yet. Yeah, uh-huh. what's to complain about? You work through all that crap, and then you just talk about it and make fun of it. I mean, you had so much success early in your career. I mean, like yeah. you just, boom, took off. Right, right I did. I was right out of the gate. Right. Yeah, and then it sort of levels off. And, mm-hmm. You know, that's the beautiful thing is you can be a has-been at 25, mm-hmm. then you're going to reinvent yourself, mm-hmm. which is sort of what, I do, what mm-hmm. I'm doing now. What, so where, where are you going now? Where's, where's Dana Good going? Well, now I'm trying not to be so strictly talking about myself and sort of opening it up more, mm-hmm. which is what I'm doing at the Comedy Gallery, talking more about just the way I see the world instead of just the way I see myself in it. How do you see the world? I mean, you're part of this Generation X. I mean, you are, that's, I mean, that's your audience. Yeah, it's true. Right. Why, 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 Generation X? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm just talking, to, you know, you get out in the world and, and it's just so many things that don't work that should. Mm-hmm. And it's just so frustrating. And, it's, and it goes all the way back to, uh, it goes all the way back to Jesus. They always nail the good guy. <laughs> why? <laughs> you know? I'll be next. No, yeah, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> Talking about the Generation X, of course, we just lost Kurt Cobain with yeah. the terrible suicide. Thoughts about that? Uh, oh, that was, that was sad. I mean, I, I mean, people joke about suicide a lot, but I think the thing that people don't really understand is that when you, for a lot of people that commit suicide, they don't have a choice. It's a chemical imbalance in their brain. Like my dad would go, ah, Kurt Cobain, some drug addict junkie. Where's my beer? <laughs> you know. <laughs> But they, you know, you, you put yourself in your situation and go, well, if I was a big rock star and had all the money in the world, I, I wouldn't kill myself. Like, of course not, because your chemicals are all in the right balance. Right. You know, that was sad. I mean, again, why can't Michael Bolton get depressed and go into the garage? Why does he got to be Kurt Cobain? Come on. <laughs> Have you- How come one guy I hate can't die one time? It's always Robert Kennedy. It's always John Kennedy. You're from Massachusetts. That's right. Yeah. So I know all those guys. You know all those guys. We party all the time. Really? Seriously? <laughs> Ted gets down. Really? You should get Ted on this show. Oh, man, that would be cool. <laughs> That'd be cool, man. We go swim on the bridge together. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about suicide. Have you, yeah. I mean, you talk about so much pain in your act. Have yeah. you ever been close? No, 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 no. Not seriously. No, no. 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 You just get, uh, you know, when you're 13 and you're Catholic, you always have that, Mom, I took a bottle of aspirin. You don't feel hot. <laughs> but no, never really that much. No, uh-huh. it just it's it's just to talk about. You know, like when you say, you know what, you know what I would say. It's like you know when you're sitting around with your buddies. Now I know you can't relate to this. Let's try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm you're gonna always try. sitting around with your buddies, and you're all talking about how you got dumped the hardest. 
Okay, yeah. See, I know you can't relate to this. Dumped? What does that mean? See, there you go. Dumping is when a woman decides not to go out with you. Oh, I thought you were talking about using the bathroom. No, no, no. Well, that's a different story on top. <laughs> that's for the late show. I don't know about that either. I'm though. sure you don't. No, I read it in Hustler magazine. Ice cream. <laughs> But, you know, when you're sitting around with your buddies and you're talking about how you got dumped the hardest, uh -huh. and the guy who got the most brutal story, that's what you laugh the hardest at. Mm -hmm. That's where I come from. Really? Yeah. So tell us, come on now, we're, we're talking now. Tell us about the, the hardest dumping that you had. The hardest dumping I ever had. Moved from Boston to San Francisco mm -hmm. to live with this woman. Wow. When I got there. That's love. At the airport. No, not at the airport. Like, within a week. Really? Within a week. So what did you do? Stayed. Turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh -huh. Yeah, but <laughs> didn't go down well. <laughs> you know, it's like medicine. Tastes really bad, but in the end, you're glad you did it. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So you still friends with her now? Uh, wasn't for a long time, but now that I'm successful, they all come crawling back. Really? Oh, yeah. So now what do you do now? Now you're heartbroken and she crawls back, and do you say... I still love you, and no, I still you care don't. about you, and, no. and hey, I'm glad you finally woke up, and hey. Yeah, no, it's like the get smart cone of silence. How you doing? Keep your distance. This could be trouble. <laughs> gotta it's gotta look out for number one. It's done. So, That's right. I mean, now, 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 wait a minute. Now, your act is so much full of pain, but we're hearing positiveness. We're hearing That's optimism. Change, man. That's the new me. Really? That glass ain't half empty. It's half full. Really? That's the new me. What's the, give me a new you joke. Oh, man. A new you joke. This is the new, the new, the oh, new man. Dana Gould. See, I don't have any jokes. I just have these weird stories. Okay, give us a new Dana Gould let me, story. Uh, okay, let me, all right, hang on. I just need, give me a minute. We got a minute. We got a minute. I'll talk about how good looking I am. Oh, I look so good. Give, give, me, a, give me a topic and I'll go off on it. Oh, a topic? Yeah. Uh, masturbation. Masturbation. See, masturbation, the best kind of masturbation you can possibly have is when you've been in your house for a long, long time, a couple of days. And you haven't been out of your bathrobe, just sitting around, drinking coffee, watching TV, nothing to do. Because it's pure frustration. Just joy. Just get it out. Just sitting there in a dark room, hammering away like a chimp in the rainforest when he sees another bulldozer. Ay, 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 ay! Enjoy! Enjoy! I tell you what, Dana, man, you are fantastic. My pleasure. Man, I, you know, I say this so often. People don't take it seriously, but I tell you, Dana Gould's doing his interview. He's leaving town tomorrow. That's right. And to tell you what kind of guy that he is, he knows this isn't going to promote his show, but he's still here because he wants to talk to you people out there, my viewers, and he's a great guy. And when Dana Gould comes back, you'll see it in the papers, go check this man out. He's fantastic. He'll make you think. He'll put you in some places that may be a little uncomfortable, but still you'll have a good time. He's a one-of-a-kind guy, brother. and I really wish you the best of luck, and we'll see you. You got Bob Hope coming up this month, right? Hey, I tell you, no kidding. Yeah, this, right. this month. But no, no, there's no one like him in the world. One, one of a kind, <laughs> Dana Good. Stay tuned. Time to get down with it. Ow. Ow. My, 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 my. We'll be right back. Dana Good. Ow, 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 ow. Hi, this is Bridget from Dream Girls. And when I watch TV, I like watching Ray. Ray's gorgeous, Ray's strong, Ray's handsome. And I don't mean just any Ray. She means fancy Ray. Oh, my, my, my. Stay tuned. It's time to get down, down with, with it. it. Oh, Ooh. my, 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 my. <laughs> I said it, get down with it. This is Fancy Ray, the best looking man in comedy today. What goes up must come down. We all know this is true. I know something that goes up never comes out. Ooh, I guess I'm the exception to every rule. <laughs> my, 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 my. Before I go any further, I want to thank my fantastic sponsors. I want to thank Insight News, where you can find my cable cast schedule. Hair by Jamey, which styles my hairdo. And my main man, R. Scott, there on the camera. The Comedy Gallery and Dana Gould for the great interview. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Make sure you tune in next week to the Fancy Ray Show, because if I'm there, woo, woo, oh, honey, we gonna get down with it. Oh, my, 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 I know I look good. Hmm, get down with it. Ow. Oh. And now the world premiere of the Fancy Ray Round. My, 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 my,
on the mic. I want to tell you, fly girl, just what I like. I like sweet in the face, thin in the waist, and the big bubble butt all over the place. I'm the king of poets, never rapped before. But here I am, knock, knocking next door. If you open the door, I'm going to slide on it. And your mama's going to treat me like a next to kid. I'm fancy Ray, and I'm doing my rhyme. And I'm here to have myself a funky good time. The 5 foot 11, and I'm built for speed. And if your man ain't got it, I got everything you need. I like sweet in the face, thin in the waist. And the big bubble butt all over the place. Let me tell you the story of Fancy Ray, the most beautiful man in comedy today. When I was born, the moon didn't rise, only the stars came out and lit up the sky. By the time I reached the age of five, my mama said I'd be the prettiest man alive. I knew I'd be success, I didn't knock on wood. I just looked at the mirror and said, ooh, child, you look good. And I did look good, honey. I am the best looking man in comedy. I have always been the best looking man in comedy. Wait a minute, you ain't clapping, baby. You ain't never seen this before. You ain't never touched it. You ain't never heard it. Well, let me tell you something, baby. Tonight, you're going to feel it. Oh, my, 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 my. Are you having a good time? Yeah. I'm five foot eleven and I'm built for speed. And if your man ain't got it, I got everything you need. I like sweep the face and thin the waist. And the big bubble butt all over the place. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Do you love Fancy Ray? Yeah. I know how you feel, baby. My, 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 my. my. Say my, 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 my. Say my, 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 my. Say go, fans, say go, fans, say go. Go, fans, say go, fans, say go. I'm gonna do my fancy dance, y'all. I'm doing the fancy dance, y'all. Stay tuned and get down with it. I'm doing the fancy dance. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are. Up above the world so high, looking at me, going, my, my, my. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.